I've come to South Sea Rose Gardens. Uh, as you can see, the roses aren't exactly out at the moment. Uh, it's a bright sunny day, you know I don't shoot normally this time of the day. Uh, but at the moment, uh, I want to do a photo shoot for you about HDR photography. Uh, when to use it and why you might want to use it. Uh, when I don't use it, because that's quite important too, uh, there are times when you don't want to use it. Uh, a lot of people use it for the wrong reasons, normally to get a look that is just cartoony and I don't go for that. Certainly not my landscapes anyway, so uh, stick with it, have a look at the video and uh, we'll see what we can get for you. So I'm not currently with my uh, trusty 6D, I currently have a uh, Sony Alpha series, this is the A7R2 and on there I've got my 24 to 70. Uh, you can see the gardens ahead of me there, it's really bright. Now the reason why I might want to do an HDR image, because the sky being so bright and the dark shadows under the bushes you can see there and around the corner the trees, you see the tree line around the corner there and beneath all the bushes, uh, it's very dark. So we've got an image ahead of us that I can look at my histogram and I can tell that we have, let's get a decent exposure, we have some, I don't know if you can see that, you probably can't to be fair, anyway you can't see that but I've got a lot in the shadows and a lot in the in the light areas of the image. The reason why I want to do a HDI image is because I want to expose for not just the ambient light, which is the light throughout the whole image, I want to expose for the sky, I want to expose for the ground and the shadow areas separately and combine them later. This isn't to make a HDR looking image, this is so I can pull the light out of the highlights and still have detail and also pull the shadows up just that detail in the shadows. Depending on your camera, there's a few ways to do this. The simplest way to do this, if your camera allows for it, is to set up your camera for bracketing. A good DSLR or mirrorless like this will have that option, and I do have that. But if you don't have that option, don't worry too much. We can, uh, we can do it manually, and that's just using your shutter, uh, change your shutter. So you want to be in manual mode. So I'm in manual, I've got my ISO, Currently at 160, I don't know why, let's put that at 100. Uh, I am looking at an f-stop of about 9, because that's really good for landscapes. That means I'm going to get good detail in the foreground as well as in, in the, the, uh, the background. And it'd be sharp in both. I'm not going to get any kind of worry with depth of field. I'm not going to have, have focusing on one thing in the in the foreground and and the stuff in the background be out of focus. So everything to be in focus for a good exposure. I've got a shutter speed of about one sixtieth of a second, which is fairly good. Uh, but at the moment, I can see that the grass is perfectly exposed. The sky is too white and the shadows around the bushes and uh, the tree line, I can't see, they're just in complete darkness. So I'm gonna bracket my exposure. What that means is I'm gonna take three images, one at the perfect exposure, so I've got that, I know that, I'm at ISO 100, f-stop 9, shutter speed of 1 60th of a second, I'm gonna take that, pop, and then all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna reduce my shutter by two stops. Take another image. Now that's going to expose for the dark areas image. I'm going to go back to my perfect exposure settings, which is 1 60 per second, and then do the same the other way. So I'm going to bring out those highlights and take another image there. So I've got three images there, all at different exposures. One's going to be exposing for the highlights, one's going to be exposing for the shadows, and the other one's going to be exposing for the midtones, the general ambient uh, light for the picture. And later on, we are going to put them into Lightroom and combine them in Lightroom and I'll show you how to do that as well. So next, what I'm going to do 
I'm going to show you how to do this with manual. Uh, if you have a Canon, I can tell you, you do have a bracketing option. I've got a Sony here at the moment, so I can put this into bracketing. Uh, I can do bracketing two stops and continuous for the three images. So I can put it on that, and put it back to our normal 160th, and I can hold the shutter down and get one, two, three images, and it does it for me. So that's me done. Uh, this picture isn't designed to be anything spectacular, it's just for purposes of me showing you how to do this. I just wanted to come here, I was hoping for a little bit more uh, roses in a rose garden, and there's not, but never mind. Uh, this is going to be just for instructional purposes only. So I want to take this back to Lightroom and show you how to combine them in there, show you why we do this and why we wouldn't want to do this. Okay, I'll see you there. Okay guys, we're now in Lightroom. I've uh, imported the six images you'll see and we've got them here. But before I do anything, I'll explain to you how some people use HDR and what you might think of HDR before you've seen this video. So if we head on over to uh, a browser, this is an HDR image and like I was talking about earlier on, it looks very cartoony. Some people like this, I don't, I think it's gone way way too far it's just not good in my eyes uh, you might like this you know again it's it's artist it's an artist's subjective view of what they think is is right so you might like it uh, the kind of thing I go for especially with landscapes it's something like that I mean it's not a perfect image because you've got movement in there because uh, it's long exposure and the boats have moved uh, but the way it's lit and the use of the, sh the shadows uh, it's a very good HDR image for landscapes, or in this case, cityscapes. So let's head on back over. We can see I've got my six images at the bottom here. Uh, the first one in the first series of three here is what the camera has thought, or what we have thought as the perfect exposure. This is the underexposed image. You can see there's actually a person walking into the image there. And this would be the overexposed image in that series. And the, the last three are when I set my camera into bracketing mode. It takes the underexposed image first, and then gives us the perfect exposed image, and then the overexposed image. So I'm going to take these last three only because I don't want to mess around with ghosting of the woman in this picture. So I think Lightroom will do a better job with these three. In here, we've got the underexposed image. You can see I have my clipping mask on, by the way, up here and up here. You'll see if I turn it off. The blues disappear in the shadows there. What this is telling me is that in the areas where you see there's blue, it's too dark for any detail to exist. So it's completely black. There's no detail there whatsoever. But that's okay because I've got this image where there's detail in there because that disappears. And I've also then got this image which even shows the detail in the dark area even more, which is why we took these images. This image is, is you'll see it's clipped in the white areas where it's showing me there's absolutely no detail there so we know that we've got this image to expose for those areas and I've got this image to expose for the dark areas and this image is going to be for the midtones so what can we do we can select all three of these there we can right click go to photo merge HDR now guys this is the first time I'm doing this I haven't done this pre video so you're watching me do this as it happens so anything that goes wrong it goes wrong and we'll deal with it as and when so there is my image combined all three images I've turned the de ghost amount off because there was no movement in the image unlike the other three there was a woman walking through it we could turn that on and it would do a fairly good job at getting rid of those because let's merge that and it gives me this outputted image there so that's uh, a fairly nice image it's still pretty much similar to that one because we haven't done anything to it essentially so you'll see there's no real difference but what we can do now is start to play 
the first thing I'm going to do is bring up my shadows you'll see those areas there that were clipped before I'm bringing those up so there's a lot of detail in there now I can even go further if I wanted to and that's going to give us a lot of detail in the shadow areas and I'm also going to bring down my highlights now this is going to bring that sky back because you noticed in the original image the sky was uh, not so blue I'm going to push my hold down the out button push my whites up ever so slightly till we start seeing a bit of clipping and then do the same with my darks and not too far okay I can add a bit of clarity only because there's a lot of detail in the trees I want to pop that a little bit you see the difference there to there even if I zoom in actually might be better for you so that's off and that's on and a bit of vibrance I prefer vibrance to saturation if I've got an option uh, I think it adds something a little bit better than saturation but I don't know what it is it's hard to explain uh, maybe you can uh, have a look play around and see what works best for you in the point curve I'm going to go to medium contrast I do like a punchy image and because I've done that I am just going to bring down my or bring back up sorry my blacks because I did start to see a bit of clipping in this area and I'm going to have a little mess around with the saturation of the blues because I'm going to want to bring that sky back out and sharpening we're going to go quite high on the sharpening 77 always add masking to around 55 that means that the if you hold down the out you'll see the areas that are covered anything that's white is affected by the sharpening anything that's black like the sky isn't affected so usually around 50, 55 works best for this setting. <coughs> Noise reduction I'm not going to worry about too much. There's no real noise in there whatsoever. And remove chromatic aberration. I always do enable profile correction. See it's already picked up my profile from my camera uh, lens. And that's taken out quite a bit of uh, vignetting. So I'm just going to add that back in. If you want you can crop this image make it a little bit more take off the lock and make it a bit more pano just get rid of a bit more of the of the bottom there and not necessarily the best picture to do this with guys I have said that you know my composition wasn't fantastic this is all just for inst uh, instructional purposes and I'm just going to bring the, the whites back a bit yeah, I like that a bit better. Uh, and that's pretty much it for this. If I was gonna be a bit more pushy, I could, I could add a bit more darkness to the sky. Although what you find that does it adds again, there's more clipping in the in these areas. Uh, if you really wanted to, you could edit that and erase make fairly large make sure your feather is set and just erase that out of the areas that you want to erase it from so it's only really affecting the sky you can see that just by doing that there's a bit at the top of the trees but that's okay and let's have a new one just to draw your attention in from the bottom and for me that's pretty much it I would do a similar sort of workflow for a seascape uh, any other landscape uh, and that is pretty much it so there's a HDR image it's not cartoony like you saw here so something like this again way too far way 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 this is HDR to the nth degree uh, doesn't look good you can actually see on the horizon there the white banding above the mountains there the reason why you get that kind of halo effect is because they pulled the shadows up too much 
and they've had to because they wanted to get this HDI image you wouldn't see any detail down there and you see it's gone this must be like a JPEG, or JPEG I would imagine because it's gone all bitty and grainy in those areas that should be dark they're trying to get detail out of an area that doesn't have any detail by pulling these shadows up too much like this and getting this cartoony effect you get that grain and, and it doesn't look good these areas should be dark really so for us we still have dark areas but we still got detail there we've pulled them out we've got detail it's a HDR image but not what people think a HDR should look like uh, remember to put your camera into bracketing mode if you have that if not you can just use your shutter speed take three exposures just change the shutter speed and uh, you will be able to get the detail in the highlights and in the shadows like I have done here okay fantastic uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this please hit that thumbs up if you have if it's been instructional uh, uh, I hope you uh, can take something from this so guys if you haven't subscribed already please do so and hit that bell that will get you uh, notified every time I upload an image I'm going to try and upload at least once a week if I can uh, generally on a Friday or maybe at some point over the weekend and I will see you on the next one thanks very much see you later bye